So more videos with basic angle computations. Um, I've got um, some conversion problems here. I want to convert degrees, minutes, and seconds to decimal degrees, which is DD. We abbreviate decimal degrees as DD. And I will convert a decimal degree to DMS, which is degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay, so we're going to do both of these problems. Uh, and both of these problems are very much uh, like any other conversion. If you want to convert feet to inches, if you want to convert pounds to kilograms, it's a very similar process to that. Um, and so what I want to do is in this scenario I've got DMS, degrees, minutes, and seconds. I have three units which would be the equivalent of having yards, feet, and inches. And I want to make them all into one unit and that one unit I want to make is degrees. So I say okay I want to make degrees. Well 105 is already in degrees so I leave it alone. 20 minutes is not in degrees so I have to convert it so I say okay 20 minutes and we convert by multiplying by a unit fraction a fraction is equal to one and what I know about minutes is there are 60 minutes in one degree 60 minutes is equal to one degree and if I multiply this out 20 times 1 over 60 and notice because that unit there and that unit there are the same they cancel I get one third of a degree Okay, or if you like your decimals, it's uh, 0.3 repeating. Uh, rule of thumb here, if you have a degrees, minutes, second problem, you're going to carry it to four decimal places. Four decimal places. Okay, and that final unit is in degrees. <clears throat> Third problem here, uh, I've got, of course, seconds, 32 seconds. So what do I do with 32 seconds? Well, it's the same type of thing. I take 32 seconds and I want to convert it. This time I say, okay, 60 seconds is equal to one minute. And the units cancel. And if I stop right now, I've converted 32 seconds into minutes. This is in degrees. This is in degrees. I also need to get this in degrees. So I have to continue. I'm not in degrees, I'm in minutes. So what do I know about minutes? Well, from the previous step, I know that 60 minutes is equal to one degree, and minutes cancel out, and I'm left with degrees. So I say 32 divided by 60 divided by 60 again. And of course, if I do that, we end up with 32 over 3,600, okay? Um, and if you like, you can convert that into a decimal I don't have that number handy. Uh, and basically to get our final answer, what we're going to do is we're going to say 105 plus one third plus 32 over 3600. Okay, that's uh, 105 degrees, that's 20 minutes in degrees, and that's 32 seconds in degrees. And when we add the three of those up, we're going to get 105.3422 degrees. Now, I want to point out something to you. When you go to our original problem, which is 105 degrees, 20 minutes, and 32 seconds, you're looking at 105 degrees plus a little more. And so it makes perfect sense to me that my answer is 105 point something. Okay? Um, when you do this type of problem, you really want to use your common sense and make sure that if you started with 105 degrees and some change in degrees, minutes, and seconds notation, you need to end with 105 degrees and some change in decimal degrees notation. So that's how you convert from DMS to decimal degrees. Uh, now, example B is basically the exact same problem, only this time I'm starting in decimal degrees and I want to end in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So in part A, I'm going from three units and condensing down to one. In part B, I'm actually starting with one unit, degrees, and I'll break it into degrees, minutes, and seconds, three different units. And so what I do here is I kind of come off to the side and I say, okay, I want an answer in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, I'm looking for three units and I look at this and immediately something jumps out at me. I have 85 point blah degrees. So I know that I have exactly 85 degrees, whole degrees. 
And then I take this remainder, this 0 0.2638, I take this remainder, 0 0.2638 degrees, and I convert it to minutes. And the way I do that is I say 60 minutes is equal to 1 degree. And when I do that, I end up with 15.828 minutes. And for me, what that means is I'm going to have 15 whole minutes. 15 whole minutes. Okay? And then just like before, I had this leftover, and I took that leftover and converted it to minutes. I'm going to take this leftover, this 0.828 minutes. So 0.828 minutes. And I want to convert that to seconds. And what do I know about minutes? I know that there's... Uh, oops, I'll get it right in a second. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. And so, again, basically I'm taking this number times 60. And when I do that, I end up with 49.68 seconds. 49.68 seconds. And 49.68 seconds... Uh, typically when we use DMS notation, we round to the nearest whole number. So 49.68, I'm going to call that 50. Okay, So that's going to give me 50 seconds. And so 85.2638 degrees is 85 degrees, 15 minutes, and 50 seconds. Okay, To the nearest whole second. And again, the concept that you had 85 and some change is equal to 85 and some change. Okay. Uh, is very, very important in DMS notation. Okay, So that's DMS notation in a nutshell. Um, some other basic angle problems will follow. Uh, for an example here, uh, I want to talk about coterminal angles. Um, so I've asked you two questions with coterminal angles, and I want to talk about that for a second. Coterminal angles are two angles that have the same initial side and the same terminal side. In other words, they look the same. And a real simple example of that um, if I just throw a sticky note on here real quick to show you, would be if I have um, an angle here, let's say some angle here, okay, and there's its measure, x, okay, some, some angle. Um, if I start here and I go around like that, same initial side, same terminal side, different measure. And this would be x plus... 360. And I could do this again. I could go start on the initial side and go around and around, right? We could, we could do this over and over and over again. It gets pretty old pretty quick. Um, and that would be x plus 720. Uh, we could keep going and going and going. And so what I've done is I've given you two questions where I say, okay, uh, here's a particular angle. Find the angle with the least positive measure that's coterminal with it. So I've got 1106. And what do I know? Coterminal angles, because they're the same angle, but we make more and more and more rotations, uh, it's going to be increments of 360. So I say, okay, I'm going to take this angle here. I'm going to subtract 360 from it. And it's real handy to do if you have a calculator laying around um, because you can just have the answer on your screen. So 1106 minus 360 is 746. And I take away 360 again, and I end up with 386. And most people at this point, mentally, if you take away 360, they know that you're going to get 26 degrees. And so that's our answer there. Okay, So 1106 is equal to 746, it's equal to 386, and it's equal to 26. And in this case, 26 is our answer because they ask for the angle with the least positive measure. Um, Part B, same thing, negative 618, find the coterminal angle with the least positive measure. Um, if I do that, uh, what I'm really looking at here is uh, instead of subtracting 360, this time I'm going to add 360. And the reason I'm going to add 360 um, is because it's a negative number and I'm looking for a, an angle with the least positive measure. Uh, so that's negative 258, and of course to that, what are we going to do? We're going to add another 360, and I get 102, and so that would be my answer for the second one there is 102 degrees, okay? Again, just some basic angle problems here, okay? Um, so that's the second one, coterminal angles. Make sure you understand coterminal angles. 
another one here, a wheel makes 270 revolutions per minute. Through how many degrees will a point on the edge of the wheel move in five seconds? Okay. Um, and this is again, this is another angle problem. Um, this is another angle problem. Uh, and it's a problem that's, that's really common. It's something that you need to understand to, to be good at trigonometry and be good with angles here. Uh, so they're telling you how fast a wheel spins. It spins 270 revolutions per minute, RPMs, really common term. And they want to know how many degrees will a point on the edge of the wheel move in five seconds? Well, one revolution or one full turn, okay, is 360 degrees. And so what I really need to know is how many revolutions will this thing make in five seconds? Now they gave me revolutions per minute. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 270 revolutions, I'm just going to talk, write rev, per minute. And I'm going to show you how units can be a beautiful thing, okay? I know something about minutes. I know that in one minute there are 60 seconds. Okay? I know that in one minute there are 60 seconds. Okay? And so if I know that there is uh, one minute and 60 seconds, minutes on bottom, minutes on top, cancels out. And what I'm left with, left with here, I've got 270 uh, on top and I've got 60 on the bottom. And more importantly than that is what is the unit? And the unit is revolutions per second. Okay, revolutions per second. And so uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can leave it 270 over 60, or you can cancel out the zeros and leave it 27 over 6, or you can do the division and end up with 4.5 revolutions per second. Okay? So that's how fast this wheel spin in 4.5 revolutions per second. Now follow my logic here. They told me that I spun the wheel for five seconds. So I'm going to multiply by five seconds. And again, seconds on the bottom, seconds on the top cancels out. And I end up with 22.5 revolutions. Okay, 22.5 revolutions. Well, what I'm telling you is they gave me how fast this thing spins. They told me it spins for five seconds. Guess what? That's how many spins it's going to make. 22.5 spins. 22.5 full revolutions. Okay? 22.5 revolutions. Now, uh, what does that mean for me? Well, they want to know how many degrees this thing has turned through. Well, one revolution is 360 degrees. Two revolutions is two times 360. So in this case, we're going to multiply by 360 degrees. Okay, and if I multiply 22.5 uh, by 360, I come up with uh, 8,100 degrees. So that's how many degrees a point on the outside of this wheel has spun in five seconds. Okay, uh, another basic angle problem, and this is actually one of my absolute favorites, is uh, clock hands because um, it has to do with angles, but it also has to do with time. Um, it says the time is 11.22. Find the small angle between the hour and the minute hands. And so what I like to do is I like to picture it, if there was a clock here, okay? So we know this is 12 and 3 and 6 and 9. And we can kind of fill in the tick marks in between uh, hoping for a decently neat drawing. And so there's 11. There's 4 and there's 5. And so when I think of 11.22, I mean, my, my hour hand is going to point not quite to 11. It's going to be slightly to the right of 11. And 22 is going to be somewhere between 4 and 5. And so that's my, there's my drawing uh, of 11.22. And they want the small, they want the small angle. Um, and so uh, this is not quite a straight angle, so they're looking for this angle here. And we'll know that this is the right angle because uh, one way is going to be bigger than 180 and one way is going to be smaller than 180. And it would help if I actually had this on the camera, wouldn't it? Um, I'm looking at the paper and not the camera. So anyway, here's kind of my drawing. Uh, again, you know, we've got an angle that's roughly uh, a little smaller than 180 and this way is a little bigger than 180. So we want the small angle. Now, 
The mistake a lot of people make is they say, okay, well, um, this hand is on 11 and this hand is on a couple of minutes past four. Well, that is true for this one. This guy's a little bit past four, but this guy is not on 11. It's actually this way from 11. So to do this type of problem, what we have to do is we have to figure out a couple of things. First of all, um, we take this clock and it's broken into 12 chunks, 12 pieces. And so I say, okay, a full revolution is 360 degrees, okay? If I divide 360 by 12, if I divide 360 by 12, I end up with 30 degrees, okay? Uh, what that means is from 11 to 12 is 30 degrees, from 12 to 1 is 30 degrees, from 1 to 2 is 30 degrees, etc., etc., etc. You get the idea, okay? More importantly, if you look between 12 and 1, uh, there are five tick marks. So if the minute hand were here, it would be 12, 11 o'clock, and if it were here, it would be 11.05. So it would be five tick marks. So this is per hour. So 30 degrees. Uh, for the hour hand to move one hour is 30 degrees. Okay? Well, since there's five tick marks between 12 and 1, we divide that by five and we end up with six. So it's six degrees per minute. Okay? And this only works, this is for the minute hand and this is for the hour hand. Okay? So, so far so good. I hope, I hope, I hope. Alright, now, the first thing I want to do is figure out if I were to go from, and I'm going to change colors on you, well, I'm going to change colored pins. I'm not going to actually change colors. It would be cool if I could. If I were to go from 11 to 4, okay, from 11 to 4, I want to know that angle. That's kind of my starting point. My minute hand's a little past 4. My hour hand is a little past 11. But this, this angle in green is going to be my starting point. So I say, okay, from 11 to 4, how many degrees is that? Well, one, two, three, four, five. It's five hour marks. So that's going to be five times 30. So 30 times five is 150 degrees. From 11 to four on the clock is 150 degrees. Okay, so that's kind of my starting point. Now, um, 11.22 is two minutes past four o'clock. So I'm going to say plus... 6 times 2, or you know, which is 12, okay? Um, because for every minute that the minute hand advances, it's 6 degrees. Okay, so what's 150 plus 12? It's 162. All right, so that's going to be, ta-da, so far so good. Then, then I have to do the really fun part, uh, which is I have to try and correct for this part here now. So I've corrected for the minute hand being past the 4. Now I've got to correct for the hour hand being past 11. Now, um, I added this because when the minute hand moved past 4, it made this angle bigger. But now I'm going to go back and I'm going to subtract. And the reason I'm going to subtract is when the hour hand moves clockwise, it is now going to make this angle smaller again. So I'm going to subtract. Now the question is, how much do I subtract? How much do I subtract? Um, and then uh, the answer there is, well, you got to kind of figure it out, okay? Uh, the hour hand moves 30 degrees in an hour. So I'm going to start with 30 degrees. Except the hour hand doesn't move an entire hour. It moves 22 minutes. So what is an hour what is an hour? How much of an hour is 22 minutes? Well, it's 22 sixtieths of an hour. It's 22 sixtieths of an hour. Well, what is 30 times 22 over 60? What is 30 times 22 over 60? Well, it just so happens this is nice and neat. It's 11 degrees. And so what I really have is 162 minus 11. Well, what is 162 minus 11? It's 151 degrees. And so if you were to walk up to an analog clock at 11.22, the hands would be exactly 151 degrees apart if it was a good clock, like a Rolex. 
So anyway, those are some basic angle problems, and those angle problems are kind of to get you thinking like uh, a trigonometry student. And I hope they've kind of gotten you thinking about angles. These are things that, that should be familiar to you from geometry. They're things that perhaps you should have seen before. So if you have any questions, please let me know.